All right, uh, it's 1500 hours. Time for the first afternoon talk here in Heidelberg, and it's about uh, back up out of the box with Zebian, uh, and our speaker is uh, Lars Vicenius. Give him a big hand. Thank you. Can everyone hear me at the end, at the back end? Okay, I shall try to speak loudly and clearly. Thank you for coming. Uh, I will start with a couple of questions to the audience. How many of you have set up a backup system for yourselves that you like and trust? Okay, maybe half, that's expected. How many of you have done that for, for a, a family member or other loved one, a friend or at work? Yes. <laughs> so about the same people, slightly less. How many of you have run a backup this year? Any kind of backup, even if you don't like it or trust it. Excellent. How many of you have done that this month? How many of you have done it at DebConf? How many of you are running one now? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Give the man an applause. So, uh, one of the things that people in a position to, to do technical things often have to do is to provide technical support for people that they possibly owe their birth to or have siblings or are married to or whatever. The family IT support. Anyone here in that position? <laughs> yeah, most of you know the situation. And uh, it's nice when, when you install Debian and it provides certain things out of the box, like a mail server for sending mail, or a web browser, or cron for automating things, or, well, dare I say, an init system. Uh, it is part of the things that an operating system should provide, an operating system in the modern Linux distribution sense. They should, uh, it should come with a number of services that most people want. Not necessarily everyone, but those people who don't want them can tweak. But if the majority wants something, say, supporting printers and scanners, it's nice if you can plug in a printer and it works without having to rewrite your Etsy print cap. That was not fun. So, uh, I have been thinking about backups for a while, and I think it would be nice if Debian came uh, set up by default in default installs with the necessary services to make backups easy. And this is what this talk is about. I will start with a bit of personal history. April 1984. My father has started his own company, and he has bought a, a uh, computer for his home office, and he let me play with it. This is my introduction to computers. And my father gave me a short lecture saying that there are certain things one shouldn't do with computers, like throwing them out of the window. And he gave me two floppies. His computer had two floppy drives. And he told me that this is floppy number one, this is where you put all your data. This is floppy number two, every time you have made any changes, you make a copy. So I was indoctrinated to backups from the start. So far, I have not experienced catastrophic data loss for my own data. Some people in my circle of friends claim that I'm obsessed with backups. This is not true. <laughs> not at all true. This is an explanation of, of how I did backups some years ago when I was trying to set up a, a, a company to provide backups as a service. So the entirely illegible top circle, red for those who can see colors, uh, represents my laptop. 
And from that, I backed up to a server I had co-located, and that was my backup number one. That was then backed up to a second server in the same rack that was a cold spare, so if the first server would go down or, or be broken, I had in minutes a, a working second server. The second server was, th was then backed up to a secret server located somewhere entirely different, so that in case the front-end servers get broken into and, and someone ma modifies the backups, I have a history of the backups, sorry, a history of backups of the backups on the secret server. Then at home I had a pair of USB drives to which I backed up and, and then took one of them to, to the office where I worked and the other one back at home. I had a file server at home to which I backed up the laptop and then I had a backup server that backed up the file server. I don't think this is obsessive. This is merely ordinary precautions. <laughs> so the grand vision I have is that you install Debian, you tell Debian where you want to have your backups, it all happens. You don't need to do anything else. Just like if you want to print something, you want to tell Debian that I have now installed a printer. Ideally so that you don't even have to do that. The system notices that, oh, there's a printer. I shall print something there. Preferably large numbers of files with some, a uh, large number of pages with some weird junk on them because Debian got confused between PCL and PostScript. But I don't like printers. Um, I would like backups to run automatically. And uh, also be verified automatically so that if there's a problem with, say, the USB drive you're backing up to, you get notified. If you want to go and have a look, you can always check the status of your backups, but you don't have to. It will just run. If you want to restore data, then that's what you need to do some interactive with, but as far as I know, nobody ever restores anything. I have written a, a backup program called Obnum. This talk is not about Obnum. We are Debian. We choose every alternative. There needs to be a default that we, we use, but whatever that is, is not relevant. Uh, Obnum is not the, the solution I'm advocating here. Competing operating systems made by an American company near Seattle or in California, without naming names. Uh, when you get them, they come installed with, with backup software and, and sometimes they push you to use, into using these. These are desktop solutions. What I would like to have is that any kind of Debian system has the tools to backup. Who here has a server? Who here would like their server to be backed up? Yeah, that's what I thought. If you happen to run Debian on, on, I don't know, a watch or a phone or, or a router, there's no reason why that couldn't be backed up. So this is not only about desktop. Backups should be stored somewhere. That's the unfortunate part of backups. You have to buy more hard drives. Uh, typically, uh, people think about backup storage as USB drives. And they're fine, they're easy. They're, uh, for a non-technical person, they're very obvious that, yes, I have this drive on my desk, it's called backups. I plug it in and plug backups happen. That would be really nice. We don't have that now. But there are other ways of providing storage. You could have a, a server, backup server on your LAN and, and set up backup so that whenever that server is available, when your laptop is at home, then backups happen. Or it could be a server on the internet, what is currently known as the cloud. And backing to the cloud, having your backups in the cloud is sometimes funny for Finnish people because in the cloud in Finnish means being high. I would like to prefer, prefer to have my backups in, in somewhere where they're slightly more reliable than being high. But there's no reason why, why we can't support this. 
obviously there needs to be some kind of configuration saying, yeah, I want to use that backup server, and then it just happens. This is also a business opportunity for ISPs. They could make it very easy for Debian to, to provide this configuration. Some people really like tapes, and if you do that, I'm not judging you. <laughs> So, uh, that is the grand vision. Any questions so far? The grand, uh, expressing the grand vision is the simple part. Nobody has questions. Good, everyone agrees. I'm continuing a little bit and then expressing more details. I would like there to be a configuration format for this so that uh, a way to configure these backups so that regardless of what software is being used, whether it's Obnum or TAR or, or <coughs> CAT to provide backups, the uh, user experience of configuring it would be basically the same always. Ideally, there's nothing to configure, but the world is quite, not quite that simple. Good defaults are essential because if we require people to start writing regular expressions for all the files that they don't want to back up because they're useless, like, say, the web browser cache files, which can be many and numerous and large, but mostly are obsolete by the time the backup runs, then we don't want people to have to do that themselves. We should provide defaults for anything that is usually uh, safe to exclude from backups. Anything that, is, anything that is actually important should be tweakable. I don't want to say that configuration is unnecessary, but uh, defaults are important and, and it should be easy to do the things you do. I'd also like uh, to support multiple backup repositories, so multiple locations to which you backup. So you can have both the USB drive and the server on the internet. Everything should be automatic so that after the initial configuration, backups just happen. I've seen uh, backups being handled by various people and various organizations over the years. In situations where you have a paid person to do things like rotate tapes, from the office to the bank and back. That works. If we expect normal people who are not paid to take care of their backups to do this, we fail. If we expect people to go out and buy a stack of Blu-ray uh, Blu discs and, and, and swap 50, drive, 50 discs to a drive in order to run a backup, this isn't gonna work. Other operations that need to happen are, are things like checking the, the backup storage that is still valid, that the backup repository is, is, has internal consistency, and that the backup data matches live data whenever possible. All the kinds of things that those who are satisfied and happy with their backup solutions obviously are already doing, but uh, doing it so that it happens for everyone is the, is the actual challenge. Oh yeah, restores. Restores are unhappy moments. If you need to restore something, you are under uh, some stress, possibly a very large amount of stress, and your spouse or your boss might be screaming in both your ears at the same time. <laughs> so my preference is to make uh, restores as simple and obvious as possible. Uh, I would like something like you open your file browser and, and backup, uh, the backups are just visible there and you can just copy the data you need. Most people who can use a computer can copy a file, so this is not new stuff for them. Having to go and enter hexadecimal numbers on a command line tool, not so much. Obviously, if this is architected uh, properly, then we can provide a number of uh, 
user interfaces and user experiences, and those of us who really like hexadecimal numbers can use those. I haven't done anything. This is uh, this talk is about expressing what I would like to see and, and seeing if anyone else agrees. Does anyone else agree? One, okay, several people, <laughs> many people, good. There are a number of things that need to be done. That's not a well thought out list. That's just something I wrote because I need to fill a slide. Uh, I'm not saying that if we do this, we are done. And I'm not saying, even saying that we have to do this or we will never be done. But it's things that might be useful to consider. And I seem to have entirely forgotten to put in some consulting management sales speech there, sorry. <laughs> so, would anyone be interested in helping in any form? One person. Come on, anyone else? Two people? Filing bugs is helpful. Trying this, testing this, speaking about this, telling the people who do this uh, technical parts of this what they would need and like to have is helping. So, with these definitions, anyone like to help? Anyone like to tell other people what they should do? <laughs> okay, some positive response. Uh, most of this should not be very difficult. The most difficult part is writing the actual back-end backup application that, that does the part of shuffling data from one place to another and then bringing it back when needed. That's what I do with Obnum. All this other stuff is, is taking pieces, it's mostly about taking pieces that exist and, and writing some small stuff and then integrating this into something that works. If we can find enough people who work on this, we can do this for stretch. Which would mean that it's a first Debian release where people can rely on, on backups being there from out of the box. I happen to think that would be cool, but I admit being slightly weird about backups. Just slightly weird. I'm not obsessing about anything. <laughs> and my backups are still running. <laughs> okay, that was a very short talk. I was hoping to have more questions. Anyone have any opinions? Yeah. Uh, wait, so wait for the microphone. Please stand up. I think given who we are, uh, might it not be uh, harder to agree on something than to implement it? What? <laughs> no, I think it's very easy to agree as long as I'm doing it alone. Uh, when I said that Debian has a tendency to choose all the options, I said uh, I meant that we have a tendency to when it makes sense to make it possible for people to mix and match various components. So we have a default MTA mail server, uh, XIM4. Sorry, it took me a while to remember the software that I always replace. But I can replace it, that's the nice part. And what we have in Debian is a, a, a uh, system as a whole where taking one of these components and uh, replacing it something else is usually quite easy when the various components are uh, sufficiently similar and compatible and we can provide the interfaces that are needed. I have uh, two questions. First is a system like Postgres, you can't just back it up. You need to take some additional steps. Are you planning to provide certain special handlers for specific software or are you looking at a solution whereby Postgres will install its own backup handler eventually? Yes, one of the, those. The second, the second one of those. Is I haven't it? decided which one. Uh, I haven't architected this at all except a little bit in my head. Because I don't want to do, come here, I didn't want to come here and present that, yeah, this is what you people should do. Okay. It's, it, I maintained lock check for a very long time, and it was a nightmare pertaining to this because we did both. Right. So I think you, 
you're going to have to make sure that you do one thing well from the start. Absolutely. The second question is um, automated backups. I, I run automated backups. My mom runs automated backups, thanks to me. Um, and that's great because it works, except when it doesn't. So um, occasionally, I mean, for instance, when you're sitting at home and you're doing an, uh, a backup and you accidentally downloaded that um, Blu-ray thing and put, left it in your home directory and now it has like backup 24 gigabytes. The Debian installation Blu-ray, yes. That's right, exactly. That, that's the one I'm in. Um, <laughs> And now it's upda uploading 24 gigabytes through your um, DSL uplink, and uh, it fails to do that, uh, and takes the next 400 days until it finally concluded because it only does it during night or whatever yeah. it is. Uh, and so the the PhD thesis or whatever my mom's working on, uh, which comes right afterwards in the file system, if you know what I mean, yep. never gets backed up until 401 days. Yes. by which time the laptop has failed. Um, yes. Is there a way for her to A, find out? I mean, how are you, yes, is there a way in your vaporware? How are you thinking about um, letting her know that this hasn't been backed up yet, that there's a problem? And would it be, or do you have a sensible idea for her to be able to say, this is important to me, and this is less important to me, so prioritize this? So yes, there absolutely needs a way for the, uh, user to say that I care about this data. I don't care about this data at all, because I can always re-download the Debian installation BD-ROM image. And this data, uh, I would like to have it backed up, but it's not as important as all the other data. This is uh, the kind of thing that people need to be able to do, absolutely. How that happens, I don't know yet. But technical details are, are solvable, more or less mostly, sometimes, by someone. Yeah. Uh, before we have the next question, uh, I would like there to be a way to notify the user saying that, oh, I have noticed this large file, new file, that you didn't use to have yesterday when I ran the previous backup. What should I do? And then we can have default saying, it looks like an ISO file. We don't, probably don't need to worry about that as much. We put it at the end of the queue. And we notify the user, and the user can say, oh, I don't care about that at all. At which point it gets removed from the queue entirely. If we do this well, or well enough, then uh, the user will rarely be bothered with these questions. I would like the user not to be bothered saying, oh, you have a, a doc file there. It's two megabytes, sorry, two gigabytes. It'll take two minutes to back up to the local machine. Do you want to back this up? This would be idiotic. Bombarding the user with questions all the time would not be useful. But when there are really exceptional cases like tens of gigabytes of data in a new file, yeah, sure, ask the user. Hi. Um, so the case about uh, the Postgres um, back up. Um, this is an example where it would be useful if a package uh, would also install some information that says although the um, database files are in var lib, uh, it doesn't make sense to back up this particular directory, ignore it. Um, it would of course be, uh, it might make sense to not back up var cache the name says it's cache data, it can be recreated, but varlib would be backed up, although it doesn't make sense. Uh, for my SQL it's the same, and there might be other programs like that. And then um, there is data in the home directory. If um, programs um, uh, do as the XDG directory specification says, they use um, um, dot cache directory and you can just ignore everything that's inside there but unfortunately not all programs uh, do this, not all packages do that so it would be useful to say okay all home dear directories that have dot something is not worth backing up because it's just cache and it might be even a lot of data inside and related to this I have a question to the audience or um, an appeal. 
Um, I have a page in the Debian wiki about XDG directory specification and a long running request that the free DOS desktop people might include a state directory, which is also data that it's not worth backing up, but many um, programs modify their config file for unusable data like the last window position. And if somebody here has relation to uh, forks at the free desktop uh, group or know how the process works, would be nice to have a state uh, type directory in this directory specification. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that it would be uh, nice to separate things that are just data that is never useful to back up or not important to back up. Luckily, uh, things like window positions are quite small. But it's annoying that they are in, they're in config information. When it comes to cache directory specifically, there is already a uh, specification for tagging a directory as a cache directory. It's called a dash D, uh, sorry, cache deal dot tag file. And there's a link to it on the internet that someone should find. Obdam supports this, uh, and a few other pro programs support this, but it's mostly unknown. Yeah, should we make it a policy that MySQL and Postgres should uh, put these files in varlib Postgres and varlib MySQL? I wouldn't mind. We have a lot of time for questions, actually, so no hurry. Who was... Some, yeah, did, did our director uh, want to ask something here? Um, what about encryption? Uh, I know I use full disk encryption on, on my desktop and on my servers. And to me, encryption is needed. So when I back up things, uh, it would be stupid not to encrypt the files I back up because I don't necessarily trust the place where I back up things. So um, if not a default, I think encryption should definitely be an option. I fully agree. And I think the default should be to use encryption when backing up remotely. Hi, I would totally disagree with Thomas not backing up Valib because sometimes I just want a quick backup of my database and it's much faster to shut down the database and take a snapshot of Valib instead of trying to dump the database and then copying the same data. It would take twice as, uh, as much time because my I.O. is probably limited to take a dump. So. If I'm in a hurry, I'm rushing to the airport and I want to do a backup, a quick backup that's probably, wor uh, probably working in 90% of the time is better than nothing. So excluding it always is wrong. So probably your vaporware should have a, do a quick backup that's probably working and do a good backup, which will take some time, but maybe I don't have this time at the moment. That's also an excellent point, and it's not just airports, but in general, if you are, say, at a talk at DebConf, and you want to go to the next talk, and you don't want to shut your laptop because carrying it open while running a backup is a little bit risky, as I've noticed this week. Uh, so my ideal backup solution would be such that when you're working on something on your laptop, by the time you're ready to go, and you shut your uh, laptop and suspend it, it's already backed up. So get, it keeps getting backed up as you make changes. I don't know when I will be there, but working towards it. But in general, being able to say, even if it's not just saying things like shutting down your databases, and so just saying, I'm at the airport, I have five minutes, back up all the important bits, yeah. would be really useful to say. Hi. Uh, I see in a previous uh, slide that uh, uh, you want a uh, backup easy like a, a restore, easy like a copy. Uh, my question is, uh, a copy is not a backup. Uh, the main difference is that sometimes you want to restore an old copy 
from a month ago. Sure. So I don't think that uh, it, it was easy as a copy. I think it is. There is <laughs> Maybe if you do you it right, it's that easy. Something more, uh, um, some way to say I want not uh, the recent copy, but uh, for example. Absolutely, copy. I agree with that. But that can be done by showing all the backups of, of your uh, data in the file browser in parallel. So you can see this is from yesterday, that's from last week, that's from last month, that's from last year. And then the user can say, oh, I want that file from yesterday, but that thing from last year because I made all sorts of stupid changes. To it. Uh, so we agree, we just need to agree on, on, on the implementation. Uh, can we re revisit, revisit the uh, database problem one more time? Sure. Um, so besides the system databases, we also have uh, personal in, uh, information management tools like uh, in KDE. Uh, it's Econady, and it helpfully stores your personal contacts in a MySQL database in your home directory. So the very same problems that we have for system directories containing databases also apply to home directories, and we don't know exactly where they are. So maybe a more generic solution than tagging those system directories is required over here. Absolutely. I think some kind of hook system where, sorry, I missed the name of the program, but uh, the thing that uses MySQL in a home directory, so that it can be told that a backup is about to run do whatever you need would be nice. And then using these hooks to say, both at the user and the system levels, to say that if the solution to the problem is that, yeah, you do a, a, a MySQL dump into a file and that file gets backed up, then that's what's happened. It's even better if this can be done without having to dump a, a, a 14 petabyte database every time you run a backup. But there are tools for this. And, and we need to find a way to integrate those tools uh, into a, a system that just works. Thanks. So I think on one of your slides you said, you know, that the technical parts are not that difficult here, right? And I think to do part that's true, like if you have a local disk, you know, we have full disk encryption, we can use something like ButterFS on top and then we get snapshots and all these nice things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if we integrate this with versus, uh, you know, like remote services, you know, possibly different kinds of remote services, then it gets a whole lot more complicated. And I think, you know, there's probably a lot of work that needs to be done there to provide uh, some sort of like working interface and then one that's compatible with all the different types of backups that we need to be able to do, right? Yes. If I'm understanding you correctly, you're implying that CAT is not the perfect backup tool. Yes. <laughs> I agree. But uh, there is uh, a set of programs that can be uh, used to solve this, and it's possible that some of them only work on, say, local uh, hard drives and, or mm, tape drives, <laughs> possibly, for those who actually want them. Or, uh, and some possibly only work realistically on, on a remote server. Maybe someone decides to write something that only ever works on their own personal PHP script on the server. It would be nice to be able to allow them to uh, integrate that into this thing. But these are certainly things that need to be considered when, when the solution gets architected and implemented. Um, when we w want to have this fully automated uh, and not thinking about, I th believe we quickly run into the question that we have to manage different states of the machine. So am I at home w uh, w on my own network? Am I traveling and have limited bandwidth even if I'm connected to a wire? Um, do I have limited battery? Um, am I giving a presentation right now and I can't be bothered to give anything away from my bandwidth or from my CPU or 
I don't want the hard disk to spin up. And so um, there are, of course, other use cases for this. During presentation, I don't want notifications from new emails to pop up. And Sorry. so... Sorry. Yes, <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, my question is, are there, is there a previous work um, regarding these questions to let the computer know that currently you can do whatever you want or please don't, these, don't do these things because you are currently used to give a presentation or I'm traveling. Um, does System D does this already? <laughs> um, yes, is there something like that to say to the laptop you are in that state and thus you shouldn't do those kind of things. Uh, I believe there is and uh, I don't know what the status of that currently is but there are people who do things like they, they have a uh, script that gets, that gets run, run by IF up down on, on network connections. It looks at, oh this looks like my home network and it sets a flag file somewhere and then the cron job looks at the flag file and it gets a bit complicated, but there is some work on that. And uh, this is, an, again, an excellent point that needs to be taken into care of, uh, into uh, consideration when designing these, these backup things. There's no point in running a backup if you're going to run out of battery in five minutes. Yeah, but uh, to be sure, it's not only about network, but sure. for example, also about notifications popping Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Many of the problems um, being talked about here seem to be solved by simply having a DBus announcement saying, I'm doing a backup now. So programs that are concerned that you should not do a backup could then signal back and say, stop, I am running and I'm noticing that I have low power or I'm doing something more important, so stop what you're doing, do your next backup next time instead. DBus seems like an excellent way of solving this. Can we integrate into the kernel? That was a joke. Uh, I just started to realize that maybe there are many types of uh, backup. Just for example, uh, most of uh, the backup of people think is like a, a snapshot. Now I want a copy how, it, uh, how the disk is now. But uh, for example, in the world of uh, databases, you have a, a sort of continuous the backup. Uh, you have uh, journaling, so every modification is sent uh, somewhere else. So if your machine crash, you can recover this journal and uh, recreate the state of the database in that moment. So I was thinking uh, if this kind of backup uh, can be uh, managed uh, in the same way or Possibly. in the same infrastructure? I would hope it can. Uh, the more, uh, how should I say, not difficult, but complicated situations like this we have, the harder it becomes, but yeah, Debian, we can do it. <laughs> Martin was failing. It sounds to me that if you do this at the user level, you're going to have inconsistencies at some point in time. Um, and generally, one thing you could do is LVM, snapshot, and so on, but that would then require for every single Debian system to have LVM, which... Um, I, I don't think that is your goal, but uh, how do you, have you thought about this? Have you thought about using a sort of standard BTRFS does it too without LVM? There are other file systems out there that do it. Have you thought about using some sort of abstraction layer here or? Yes, I think uh, some kind of consistency needs to be attempted. File system or block device level snapshots are uh, not a complete solution because even if you take an LVM snapshot, you can have an application that needs to write upgrades to two files. And if you write something to the first file, you take a snapshot and the snapshot in, is inconsistent. I'm not saying that this is a good way to write applications, but raise your hand if you've ever noticed that programmers are a little bit stupid sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I don't have a solution for complete consistency. I don't know if one exists. But we can see what we can do, and, and if we are consistent to, I don't know, 7 to 15 nines, that will be fine. You had a question. My yes. question goes a bit in a similar direction. Um, you uh, ta already talked about that um, you would like to be able to plug in some functionality at uh, will uh, or to make it a bit modular, because um, uh, for, for Opnon, you said uh, you want to make it very generic so that it doesn't assume much, but uh, especially for consistency, uh, to assume some things can help, but to make it uh, required is a problem too, because maybe people don't have ButterFS, for example. With ButterFS, you could do a snapshot, um, a database which probably uses uh, F-Sync to synchronize data and use a journal file, you can get away with a snapshot, I think. And you can uh, even ask ButterFS, use the old snapshot and the new snapshot and only give me the files and it has the new files within a very short time, yes. a shorter time that any find uh, will, will find the files on the, on the disk, for example. Yes. Uh, do you think uh, of ways to in integrate this functionality as an option and make it, uh, or do you, what do, do you want to assume as a requirement on the machines? Uh, what do you want to uh, have as an option? Have you thought about this? Uh, a little bit, but I thought it would be a really good idea to gather a group that uh, thinks about this together. Because I'm a brain with a little stupid bear. No, that's not wrong. So I'm not really smart all the, all the time. Sometimes I do really stupid things like give very short talks and long QA sessions. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll, this will have to be the final question. Perhaps we can yes. have time for one more. Afternoon. Hello. Um, I thought it would seem necessary that individual packages dictate um, files that should not be backed up. You know, like individual packages provide an exclude list so that individual package maintainers can specify that instead of trying to do a comprehensive database within one backup tool. Um, also, um, for individual packages, I was thinking databases to provide um, a script to be triggered in case they need to know that a backup's about to start or even to dump out a backup if, you know, like in the Postgres situation, if you did want to create a full dump that could be backed up more easily than the contents of varlib. You could yes, exclude the package, the Postgres package could exclude varlib, Postgres, and create a, a more flat backup elsewhere at the request of the backup program. Yeah, I agree. And uh, in general, we need to be able to accommodate these kind of special needs of things that do anything except have a single file that they never write to. So that would be released back up. I think we are out of time. I don't know if there are no further questions. So we thank you, Lars. So, or can, do you want to allow one quick question? It's not so much, uh, it's not so much a question, but uh, the scope of what you're proposing is huge. And I'm thinking, and the ambition level of it is huge. And I'm thinking it might be helpful if you kind of like prioritize some kind of scope on this because there are so many user situ use situations for Debian and it's used in so many ways that if, if you kind of make a, an application that can do work in every situation. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's very ambitious. I'm not saying it can't be done, but uh, <laughs> how you'd use it in the real world might be a problem. But, so some kind of scope on your, your ambition yeah. would be good. Uh, I agree. And, uh, my first scope would be to uh, back up files that are, don't require, that are not databases or require any kind of special handling, because that's doable for stretch. And if you can then start adding hooks and so, so on for stretch plus one, we have plenty of time. Thank you, Lars, and thanks all for coming. This concludes the uh, second uh, talk this uh, afternoon.